Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Listen, millionaires, aspiring, first generation, cash flow, millionaires, me and you, let's play a game, shall we? Before we get this video started, let's play a game, me and you, let's do this. Ready? Here we go. In the comment section below, in the comment section below, be prepared to write down the first thing that comes to your mind when I say the following words. You ready? Comment section, here we go. Number one, Bitcoin. Number two, stock market. Number three, banks. Number four, real estate. Number five, Forex. Number six, retirement and 401k plans. Write down the first thing that comes to your mind in the comments section below that comes to your mind when I say these four, five, six things. What's coming to your mind right now? All right, well, what you might realize is that these are all common financial tools to help you grow your wealth. I mean, it's all over social media. Everybody sees it in newspapers and magazines. They get it in flyers at their jobs. They get it in their mailboxes. You see these financial instruments being pitched to you, so therefore you can grow and build your wealth, right? But what if I told you there's one, one, one financial tool that nobody's talking about? It's like hush. Nobody's talking about this financial tool, even though it's a powerful, tax-efficient tool out there in the marketplace today that nobody, sadly, is talking about. But however, wealthy people, millionaires that I've gotten, multi-deca millionaires, billionaires that I've gotten to know over the last 21 years have a ton of this, but yet, nobody's talking about it. Now, what if I told you that this financial tool is older than America? That when the market and economy crashes and goes down, this financial tool does not. What if I told you also this financial tool is one of the most efficient ways to transfer wealth from one generation to the other without paying a dime in tax? Would you listen? Sounds good to be true, right? Well, in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad, I'm going to give you something to seriously consider thinking about if you want to be a first generation cash flow millionaire and you want to pass it on to the second generation millionaires in your family in this episode happening right now. What's cracking, everybody? Mighty smart guy, Matt Zapali here, hailing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. And before we get started, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like, follow our business page here on Facebook. And if you watch this on YouTube and you want to think like a millionaire, you want to strategize like a millionaire, and so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire, make sure you click subscribe, hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. All right, so let's get into it. So if I was to share with you these names, Okay, are you ready? Here we go. Disney, J.C. Penney, Stanford University, McDonald's, even Master P. What do they all have in common? Are you ready? Here we go. Three, two, one. Two words. Life insurance. What? Yes, life insurance. Two words that are in common with all these names I just mentioned. So before I explain how some of these companies got to where they are today, let's just get this out of the way. Most people think, when I say the words life, insurance, here's what they're thinking. They're thinking death, something morbid. They're thinking about something that's expensive. They're thinking about funerals. We're thinking about something that only rich people get. They're thinking about something that's too expensive. They're talking about something they'll get later on. You're right. What, by the way, what do you think about when I say the word life insurance? If you didn't participate at the beginning of this video about the first thing that came to your mind when I mentioned those different financial tools, in the comment section below, I want to know, what are you thinking about when I say the words, the two words, life insurance? What is it? I want to know. And by the way, I totally get what many of you think about the words life insurance. I remember being in the United States Marine and uh, I was about to deploy right into Somalia, Africa, where in the USS Tripoli. And uh, we're about to get geared up and guys uh, saying, hey you, hey, you guys, Marines, you need to go down to legal. For what? You need to go down to legal to sign off on your wills, you know, my wills, and you need to sign off on your insurance policies. Like, what, do, what are you talking about? So we had to get downstairs with the lawyers. They drafted up some paperwork for our will. And then we had to sign off on our paperwork about what we want in terms of our service men's group life insurance. For 15 bucks a month or 20 bucks a month, whatever it was, we can get a quarter million dollar life insurance policy to pay to our mothers, to pay to our loved ones, whatever the case would be. That was my first exposure when it came towards life insurance, and I associated it right away with death. Why? Because I'm about to land in Mogadishu in, in Operation Restore Hope in Somalia, Africa. However, I want to challenge the way you think, and more importantly, how multimillionaires think about money and how to grow their wealth, and obviously pass it on to the next generation. 
So let me tell you a little story about this little known company that we all get to enjoy. For those of y'all fans of Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse and me personally, fan of Goofy. But listen, Disney Studio was founded in 1923 in Los Angeles by Walt Disney. Alongside his brother Roy, they were creating little cartoon characters. And uh, based on these cartoon characters, they wanted to finance a little company called Disney. And based on this little company called Disney, they wanted to create a theme park that would associate this theme park with these said characters, like I just mentioned earlier. However, he failed in the pursuit of financing to actually get the part started. They went through personal loans, they went through a bank financing, they went through friends and family, and guess where he got the money to help establish his park? A large part of what was collateralized for him to get the loan, for him to get the money to start his park came from where? His cash value life insurance policy. Think about this, Disney and his brother Roy had a big dream of building a business. Think about this real quick, in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of this crisis, in the midst of many of you sadly filing for unemployment, for those of you that are thinking twice about your current career and think about changing careers or businesses altogether, you've got a dream you want to pursue and you need some financial tools. What are you gonna rely on? What are you gonna rely on? Banks, SBA, credit cards, withdrawing money from 401k? Some of you may not even realize that mom or dad or grandma or grandpa may potentially have gotten a life insurance policy for you which is generating cash value that you may not even know about, which may potentially be a source for you to fund your dreams and fund your business just like it did for Walt Disney and his brother Roy. Now, let me tell you about another story, a little known company that everybody knows about. How about this company called McDonald's? Let's, take, let's talk about McDonald's here real quick. Working as a milkshake machine distributor in 1954, Ray Kroc took notice of a successful hamburger stand in San Bernardino, California. Now here's the interesting part. Ray Kroc did not take a salary from McDonald's for eight straight years. However, to meet payroll and to satisfy his own personal needs, guess where he took money from? To meet payroll, to meet his employees' needs, his own needs, guess where he took the money from? Life insurance. Yes, life insurance. See, all these people think that life insurance is just for dying. It's actually for the entrepreneurs. It's actually for those who are living let me ask you this question. Did you ever think that life insurance could be used this way? I mean, did you ever think that life insurance could be used this way? That, that it's more than just funeral, it's more than just something you buy when you're older. But however, when you start thinking like a millionaire, guess what has to happen to you? Guess when you start thinking like a millionaire, guess what starts happening to you? You start expanding your vision and start seeing other financial tools that the wealthy have been using for generations. But the coolest part right now, especially if you're watching this video, is that when you start thinking like a millionaire, you start seeing that life insurance just isn't for the dying. Life insurance just isn't for the dead. More importantly, it's for the living. But those that realize the power of life insurance are those that get blessed, at least have an opportunity. If you've got a mind to think like an entrepreneur and put your vision to actual work and to actually scale and to creating a proof of concept, to create a business that works, guess what? A funding source potentially could be as these two gentlemen have did before in their careers from their life insurance policies. You know, the more I think about it, the more I've been around multimillionaires, decamillionaires, and billionaires, I can't think of not one of them, not one of them that do not have a life insurance policy. Not one. Here's my policies. This is not for my clients. This is for ourselves, my wife and I. This is for my own self. This is for my trust. This is for my kids. Oh, by the way, speaking of trust, who taught me about trusts? I got my own family trust right here. This is a copy of it. The original is in our safe. But the reason why I keep it here at the office is because as I travel, something happens to me. People know exactly where my money goes. But this is where my life insurance policy goes. This life insurance policy, something happens to me, boom, it forms a trust. My money goes inside this trust. Boom, my kids now are official trust fund babies. See, that's how millionaires think. It's just not life insurance for the, for, for the, for the dying. It's how to create wealth. How do you create, more importantly, this funny word called generational wealth. So if you want some of that, consider the way you're thinking about this financial tool called life insurance. Again, sadly, in my 21 years as an entrepreneur in a personal financial space, I've never met a multimillionaire, a decamillionaire, a billionaire that does not have a life insurance policy. But sadly, I've met so many people that are broke that don't have one. There's a correlation there that understand and wrap their mind. By the way, it might be a financial education piece, Susan. It may not just necessarily be financial life insurance, but you have to consider the fact that a lot of people today do not have life insurance for lack of one thing, lack of awareness and lack of education. And if you're watching this, I hope that your awareness and potentially your education is getting to the next level. So in closing, and before I wrap up, you might be asking yourself, how did Disney do that? How did, how did McDonald's and Ray Kroc 
do that? How do these guys, like Mass Shapia, how do they create this financial tool known, this financial tool known as life insurance? How do they use that financial tool to help them build their dreams and to finance the things that they love and care about today and to take care of the people that they love and care about in the future? How do they do that? We'll be sharing that episode in a strategized video coming here this Wednesday. So I hope you subscribe to our YouTube channel and you stay posted for that video here coming shortly. And last but not least, let me wrap up this video with this proverb from King Solomon from the book of Proverbs in the Bible. Now, no, 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 I'm not throwing down Jesus down your throat. Listen, King Solomon was regarded as the wealthiest king who ever lived. He was the Bill Gates. He was a Warren Buffett. He was the Steve Jobs. He was the richest man who ever lived and took his people to a land of prosperity and more importantly, happiness. And he says in Proverbs, this quote, a good man leaves an inheritance to his grandchildren. Proverbs 13, verses 22. With that being said, I appreciate you guys tuning in. If you haven't done so already, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like, follow our business page. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notification to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. So therefore, we can help you start thinking like a millionaire to help you start strategizing like a millionaire so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire. Are you a money smart guy? And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.